Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to install one of my favorite NAS operating systems that has its roots in ZFS, at least since 2011, and we are going to take the link station to the next level. We're going to install, configure, and tinker with true NAS in a link station N1. So hang tight, because it's going to be fun. In my last video, we've reviewed and configured the link station N1, which is an all SSD mini NAS, which comes out of the box with a free basic license of Unray. However, one of the biggest issues we discussed when dealing with SSD slash NVMe is the trim and parity duality. And to get it to work safely, we kind of hacked our way around uh, ZFS in Unray. ZFS is true NAS's bread and butter, and it's rooted in its core. So in my opinion, Opinion, it seems like the perfect candidate for an all SSD NAS. And by the way, this configuration will work on any device of your choice. So in order to get true NAS on the link station, we're going to need the following. A monitor, an HDMI cable, a USB stick to hold the image for an installation, a keyboard, and an ethernet connection to your router or switch. The first thing we want to do is preventing the link station from booting up Unraid. The easiest way to do this is by removing the USB mini dongle containing Unraid and store it somewhere safe in, you know, in case you need to revert back to Unraid. Now, if you're going to do this in the link station, I just need to disclaim that according to the link station documentation, if you remove the USB that is inside the NVMe compartment, you could potentially void your warranty. Also, installing true NAS in the link station is not supported by the Link Plus folks, which is the company that makes the link station N1. So this is my own personal hack, and I would encourage you to first watch the video till the end before starting to hack away. <laughs> so if you have the link station in front of you, flip it around and open the NVMe compartments. Next, locate the little USB dongle and remove it. If you want to install any additional NVMe drives, just simply slide the NVMe drive at an angle, make sure that it's all the way in, otherwise the link station is not going to recognize those drives. Then hold them flat and just pull back the little lever. Make sure you remove the plastic filament so that you don't run into heating issues. Connect the HDMI cable to the link station and monitor, and also the keyboard and ethernet cable. Sweet. Go to the TrueNAS website and download the latest version of TrueNAS. Download Rufus and run it. Once Rufus is running, just select the image of TrueNAS, making sure that the correct drive is selected and hit start. Right after hitting start, ensure that DD mode is enabled. Otherwise, you're going to have booting issues. Head back to your link station and put the USB stick in any available USB port. Let's power on the link station and hit the delete key. Select the BIOS and go to boot. And make sure that the USB is the first device. Now it should just pick up the USB, but just double check. Notice that the TrueNAS boot has been recognized and just let it do its thing. Select the install option and then select the MMC option and press OK. Then choose yes. Choose option one admin, which is the recommended by IX systems and then enter a password. Now create a swap partition and let it rip. Once we start it, make a note of the IP address that you see on screen and continue the installation in, well, your favorite browser. Rock and roll, it's hardest pumping and to keep this channel's hearts pumping, don't forget to subscribe and like our video. Now, let's configure the TrueNAS scale instance. Log in with the username and the password that you've just set up during the installation and you should be in. Now, first things first, let's configure the network. Click on networks. Under Interfaces, select Edit, disable the HCP, click on Add right next to Aliases, and under the IP address, enter, well, an IP that you know and that's available in your network. Don't forget to set the CIDR to 24. Then click Save. Enter your default gateway, and in my case, it's going to be 192.168.1.1, and click Register. Now click on Test Changes, Confirm, and then open a new tab, and entered a new IP address that you just configured. Log in and click on Go to Network Settings. Now just select Save and voila. Now to configure the DNS, just click on the Edit near Global Configuration and under Name Servers, add your DNS service of choice. 
I'm setting mine to Cloudflare and Google just for you know this demonstration purposes. But if you have a DNS of your own, put that there. Now let's open a shell and ping Google to see if it resolves and it does. Now for the most important part, because this is an NAS, let's go and create a pool. So click on storage, create a pool and enter a name. This time I'm naming my Saitama. And if you haven't seen this one, you have no idea about what you're missing. <laughs> Now, if you get this warning, like you see here on screen, just click on allow and the storage tick box and next. I have three NVMEs, so I'm selecting RAID Z1. And what that means is that um, if one of my drive fails, my data is still safe. Now, select the SSD disk and click next on the following steps. Now, click on create pool. Confirm for all the data to be fully erased and continue. Awesome. On the board, everything seems to be in order. Now, let's create a user because if we want to use Samba, we need a dedicated user. So click on credentials, local users, and in users, select add. Give it a name and enter a password. Now, I personally like to set my UID to 1000 and it's you know, just a really old habit of mine because most of the Docker containers that I install seem to work really well when the user IDs are pretty much the same. But you can skip this step if you want. Now click save and we have a user. Now let's create a data set, which is kind of like a folder and the share for that data set so that we can access it from other machines. Go to data sets, click on add a data set and give it a name. Then select the SMB dataset preset so that we can access this from Windows. Now click start to start the SMB service. Now let's give full permissions to our user. Go to share, click on the little shield, which is the added file system ACL. Click on add item and then just select the user that we've just created. Now set the permissions to full control and let's apply these permissions recursively, which means for any child folder. Then we can just simply test this by creating a folder in our Windows machine, just to ensure that it works. And that's it. We have a fully working TrueNAS scale instance running on our old SSD link station. Now, I'm just going to show you one of my favorite things to do in TrueNAS, and that is to create snapshots. Snapshots take, well, a snapshot in time, uh, of the data set or data sets that you kind of select. So if you accidentally delete something, you can always restore it up to the time when that snapshot was taken. To do that, you can either create weekly jobs or do it instantaneously. Let me show you what I mean. Now, click on data protection and select add. Choose a data set that you want to take a snapshot. And in our case, we're setting ours to be daily and to last at least two weeks. And hit save. Okay, now I'm going to show you the manual version of creating snapshots. It's pretty simple as well. Click on data sets and select create a snapshot. Now make sure that you select the share you want to snapshot and hit save. You can view your snapshots by clicking on manage snapshots. And if you want the extra information, just tick this little slide here called show extra columns. Mine's already done because I've done it before, but if yours is not activated, just do it here. Now, if you delete a file and you want to restore it, you can either restore it directly from TrueNAS or you can do it just in Windows. So just click on your shared location and click on properties. Then on the tab, you will see something that says previous versions. Now look at the dates and select the version that you want to restore and voila. Really cool, right? And you know what else is cool? Smashing that subscribe button. Now, finally, let's install an app. And since I did Jellyfin for Unraid, I'm going to do the same thing for TrueNAS. Let's select apps, then click on check available apps, and then click on refresh the charts. Now, let's just look for Jellyfin. We need to choose a pool for our apps. So let's select a Saitama NAS, which is the only pool we have available. Now, I suggest you select the correct time zone for you. And again, I like to put here my uh, UID and group ID as 1000. And this is why I've had 1000 as well um, when I created my user. Don't ask why, but I had issues in the past and this seemed to work. So <laughs> from then on, I just kind of like do the same thing time and time again. Now, next to additional storage, click on add and select host path. Now you can just navigate on the host path to your share and create a mouth path. I will just call mine Saitama Share, which is nice and obvious. 
Now, if you keep having the message saying deploying and th this status just doesn't go away, the best thing to do is just to refresh the page after a little while. Now, click where it says web portal, select your language and choose a username and password. You know, all standard stuff here. Click next and choose the media. I'm going to choose movies, but whatever category that suits you. Click on the plus sign next to folders and select the mount point we previously created. Now in my case, it's going to be the Saitama share and then just click OK. Now scroll down and click OK and hit next. Hit next again. And usually I just untick this remote connections because, well, I'm not really enabling this to the public, just my own internet. Now simply log back in and watch your instance in all its glory. Now, just like we did for Unraid, let's just enable the iGPU for transcoding. Click on the sandwich button, settings and dashboard. And then select playback and transcoding. Then choose hardware acceleration and let's click on video acceleration API. Now scroll down and hit save. And that's it folks, we have a TrueNAS running, and in this case, with SSDs. One thing to notice is that if you are following along and doing this on the link station, you will notice the LEDs blinking and they will never be static again. And the reason for that is because those LEDs and even the reset button are controlled by software that comes pre-configured in the USB stick that we removed earlier in order to install TrueNAS. Now, if we plug in the USB device that comes with the link station to the computer, you will notice a config directory with the folders LED and reset. And these are basically bootstrapped during the startup and copied into the binary folders of Unraid, basically. So it's got nothing to do with the BIOS. Those LEDs are controlled by software that comes with a USB stick, basically, at least as far as I can tell. Now, to me personally, I don't really mind the blinking LEDs, but if you have super bad OCD, there is a little way to mitigate this problem, well, slightly. I do not recommend that you do this, okay? But I've put a script on my GitHub and a few steps that you can follow to tamper with those LEDs. Now, all it does is that it removes the blinking from those LEDs, okay? But you still get a pulsating RGB light. I couldn't find a way to get the static LEDs back, sorry. <laughs> now, needless to say that I don't take any responsibility if things go sour. And also the folks from, uh, from Link Station have no affiliation at all with this kind of stuff, okay? This was 100% my own hack. But it would actually be really good if the Link Plus folks could release their own patch so that the LEDs work with TrueNAS installations and well, other operating systems. Now, if things go really bad and you want to revert back to Unraid, simply delete the pool in TrueNAS and delete all of the data, make a bootable uh, USB loaded with Gparted and delete all of the partitions. Then plug uh, back the USB stick with Unraid, that's this one right here, and reboot the device. Now, in theory, it should all go back to normal and you will get your beloved LEDs uh, lights right back. Now, I tested this out and it worked for me. Now, anyway, folks, I hope that this was useful and fun. And now you have a true NAS installation in your all SSD link station. More hacks are coming soon, so stay connected. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Take care.